I talked to host and streamer Kelly Link about her own D&D origin story, playing the game on Twitch, and also how this has all affected D&D's resurgence. My parents met playing Dungeons and Dragons in the 70s, and they thought age five was the appropriate age to introduce their daughter into it. So it was a, a small little campaign that my dad was DMing. I picked a wizard because what child doesn't want to shoot magic missiles from their fingers? And I was not understanding of that, like a wizard should stand in the back lines. And my mother was being attacked by an ogre, so the five-year-old me jumped in front and was killed instantly. Or at least went into the negatives, which means you start bleeding and you're gonna die. And my mom was so upset at my dad for killing his daughter, but my dad, who has been a very, diligent DM was like, those are the rules. She should have known, right? Was, so that's my introduction into D&D. &D. Uh, I would play sporadically. My parents had a couple and a few other friends that would come over every Sunday for, actually still today, so for 30 years. And it was just something that I was always around. And when I was 12, I used to like sneak the player's hand guide and the dungeon master's guide on my school field trips. And I would host little campaigns for my friends. I've always been around it. And then I took like a break in college until I started working for a game studio. And there was a bunch of other nerds there. And we started running a second edition campaign for years, years actually, until I moved. Wow. It was great. That was hardcore. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of different aspects to it. And I actually was just telling someone that I really like stricter rules. I enjoy second edition because it's a lot less forgiving. And like, they punish you for making the wrong decisions. Fifth and fourth edition are a bit more relaxed, more open to the general public. But the reason I really like D&D and, and you kind of get the same vibe online, but not really, is that when I was playing that second edition campaign for three years, we would, like all five of us, or six of us actually, would gather together in this one table, like dim the lights, play Midnight Syndicate, which if you haven't heard them, they're the best D&D band. And we would have like, even like a hookah set up in the center. And it was just a, a communal experience. It's something that there's really not too many other instances that you can relate that to. You, like, you can go to the bar, but it's loud, it's expensive, that kind of stuff. There's not many other situations where a bunch of adults can gather together and just hang and chat and also kill goblins. That's Mostly fair. the hanging and chatting. <laughs> There's a lot of tools online right now that like allow it to be more accessible to the individual compendiums and stuff like that that like condense the rules down because it's really intimidating when you see a DM come and they have six books and like player hand guides for each of the classes, right? So there's definitely, if that intimidates you, there's definitely things online that can make it a lot easier for you to create a character. But most importantly, you have to be playing with people that you enjoy playing with. So I used to play paladins a lot. Now I play halfling thieves because everyone plays paladins. Everyone wants to be the holy grail. Um, I think it's awesome. As a paladin, you have non fifth edition. I'm actually just recently starting playing fifth edition. In pa as a paladin, you have to be lawful good, and you have to make all the decisions that a paladin would make based off of the god that they believe in, right? And it is incredibly unforgiving if you have the right DM, that if you do something that's not paladin-like, you lose your paladin hood and you set, like, reset back to level one or something. God, this is second edition, so I don't know the, like, the full rules for it. But I love that. I love the fact that you had to play the character that was specifically set for them instead of everyone always wants to be this omnipotent character that just knows everything and is aware of everything. But in just a few hours, I'm going to be playing like a very young halfling thief and I'm going to purposely be making bad decisions because that's what a 19-year-old thief would make. Right? I, I think that's what really gets me excited is people that are willing to put boons and banes onto their character. They're willing to like have flaws in it and play to that. I actually asked this question to the designers. Um, I, I genuinely believe, and I was asking for their opinion as well, that it is in a, in a renaissance right now because of all the live streams and especially because of Critical Role. And I'm sure people can definitely uh, point it to like Acquisitions Incorporated, which do their big like 3,000 person stadiums of their games, but still that wasn't live streamed. They didn't have VODs for it for you to go back and watch it, right? People now can tune in like it's a TV show with people that are one, beautiful, two, have amazing voices, and three, are enjoying it. I think by all of these shows starting and showing that all of these people, all, like the random dude down the street or like the nerdy guy can play Dungeons and Dragons. And enjoy it. I think that is what is maybe the biggest proponent. Also because 5th edition is just very like good for a general audience. It's very uh, easy to understand compared to the earlier editions. I think that the accessibility and the knowledge that everyone plays D&D. Cool people, nerdy people, cool nerdy people. Like it's for everyone.
I'm Todd Kenrick, and this is Dungeon Life, a D&D documentary. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, you can head over to our Dungeon Life Patreon page and become part of our community. Thank you so much.